hello there, Natalie. Uh, it's great to see you. I uh, watched your film the other day. Uh, it's it's quite something. Now, in the UK, Till Death Do Us Part was a quite a controversial sitcom. Uh, very successful, but quite a controversial sitcom. But I know th this film is not that. If for, for UK audiences who've not seen it yet, what's it about? Do you know what's funny? I can't believe you caught on on that. My mom lives in London, and when I told her we're going to make a movie called Till Death Do Us Part, she said, do you have any idea that there's a huge show in the UK that is very popular? That's where you named that. And I was like, no one's going to figure that out. And you probably that's... asking me right now, but that's pretty <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, it's completely different from that show, completely. So our film is... Um, it's a it's a fun film. It's basically an action thriller. It's a dark comedy that has you know gory. It's it's horror. Um, we kind of like I, I don't want people to misunderstand because a lot of um, in US fans and people have been like marketing it as a, as a straight up action and it's not. So I just want to make sure that the audience is like a prepared for a fun flick and just you know kind of just have fun watching it. Don't take it seriously because we honestly decided to basically almost like a and make fun of like you know John Wick and and other things and and take a, a little bit of as that aspect and just combine it with um you know Jeffrey Reddick who's a creator of Final Destination with his I ideas and his crazy mind and just add a, lo a lot of like blood and gore so with um dark comedy because we have this one small person in it and they're basically representing those seven seven groomsmen so it's basically a runaway bride who decides she doesn't want to get married and and her groom basically gets really angry and sends um seven angry groomsmen after her to kill her um and it's uh the idea that the director described and he said just imagine basically snow white and seven um seven angry uh dwarves <laughs> so that seems a good reference. That's pretty much what it is. It's a Snow White story, but a modern version of it. So the bride is basically the Snow White who decides to kill the, the seven groomsmen. So there is a, a terrific amount of action in this. Uh, I mean, a huge amount of action, and you're in all of it. Um, mm -hmm. How badly did you get injured in this? Because it's quite brutal in places. Oh my God. I, I, I'm always afraid of getting injured because you're right. Like once you go in and because you still need a lot of preparation, but when you're working on film and you're doing everything fast and you, you know, even though we've choreographed previous, we basically did not use any of that because once you get to a location, the director says, Oh my God, no, nope, none of this works. Let's just, you know, rearrange everything. Let's figure it out on the spot. And of course you have to be super prepared. And my main thing that I always do before filming is I train a lot. I try to stay as fit as possible so that no matter what happens, I'm prepared for it. And I try to avoid injuries as best as I can. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's not even your fault. Sometimes it's somebody else who, who is not aware of what's happening. So luckily on this movie, I did not get injured and nothing happened. I was working with the best team of the best, you know, Arnold Chan, who stunt choreographed, um, D.Y. Sao, who is one of the groomsmen. He um, helped choreograph the scenes. Um, I mean, and of course, Timothy Woodward Jr., who just knew exactly what he wanted. So I think it helps when you have a team of professionals who actually know what they want. And everybody that we were surrounding ourselves with, they just knew exactly what we wanted and how we wanted it to showcase on screen. So that one thing that um, occurred to me, Natalie, with uh, all of your scenes where you're uh, giving everyone a right good kicking is that you're doing all of this in a full length bridal dress. Um, can't <laughs> yeah. have been easy at all. Yeah. That. Oh my God, that dress is so heavy. Can you imagine that lace dress? Like at first I um, I, I decided to work with this Italian brand called Olvis and I, I asked them, hey, would you guys provide dresses? And they're like, oh, we'd love to. So they shipped me those Italian dresses and we're like really pushing on time, ready to go into production. And yeah. I'm like, I got the dresses, don't worry. And then I get those dresses and I'm like, they're so heavy. And I was like, <laughs> what was I thinking? I literally ordered a professional, you know, like bridal dress. Yeah. And, and and I didn't think about the fact that that all that material is going to be dragging, it's going to be heavy. And if you're putting blood on it, it's even heavier and then it's sticky and it's just so uncomfortable. So honestly, I made it comfortable, but it, it was not. It's like and every time I made a kick, that dress was just annoyingly everywhere on my on my way. So I was trying to make it like flow more. So we we're choreographing stuff. The 
director wanted to have more freedom and just more an animalistic style instead of just very choreographed routine. So it was very gritty. And, you know, and I wanted to have the dress just flowing everywhere. What I didn't realize is that the dress is not silk. You know, the dress yeah. is like, or like, you know, like a light material. It was heavy. So when it was, when it was flowing, there were so many takes when the dress just would like would just go over my head and I'd just be stuck in it trying to like even get out of it and all I'm there is standing in my underwear saying how did it go how was it and they're like uh yeah and 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 the funny part is like one scene one of those action scenes the director first the first edit that he put together he kept that in he said it's hilarious it's like that's what's funny about it he kept it in I was like but are you sure and so in the end he kind of decided to like cut that part out but there was a moment where I do this backflip off the of the shelf of the bookshelf and the dress literally just covers me in it and I just I can't even get out of it while I'm still trying to fight the guy it was just it's yeah it's funny and that's on top weird. of that, I'm bare feet. I'm bare feet. That's another thing that he was like, well, that'd be fun if your whole character is like completely bare feet. That'd be fun. And of course, like going on the on the roof or like running in the ground, you know, or like fighting outside in the back in the and in, in the backyard, you have all these stones and it's just it's so uncomfortable. I was like, oh my God, I guess that's what Bruce Willis went through when he was doing die die hard. Well, later we found out that he actually had some special like soles made for his feet. <laughs> which I did. I was like, no, no, great. No, no, no. So uh, uh, with all of this in mind then, what was um, the most difficult and awkward scene uh, to choreograph and actually shoot for yourself? Um, the most awkward? I think, oh, um, I think probably the, the last final scene with the groom because um, we hired, um, so uh, Timothy hired Sidarius Blaine, who is a wonderful, you know, actor. And I, I had worked with him before in the movie called Fortress, The Fortress, and then The Fortress Number Two with Bruce Willis. And we worked in Puerto Rico. And we had a lot of fun. So I was like, he would be great as, 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 as the groom. And he was hired the day before. And so our first scene was basically the final scene where we had to be very intimate. We had to like, you know, um, almost like, like, like have this, cat and mouse game going on yeah. but also like emotional and then and then dancing and then you know same time you're like fighting it was just so much in one scene and it was like in the beginning i'm not even kidding you every take we took both of us would turn around from each other we're like we have no chemistry it was horrible we were just literally turn around to the cameras we're like that was shit we, we feel nothing there's nothing going on every time we we're like this is horrible this is never gonna work and everybody would look at us and be like, what? You're like, you're crazy. You have no idea what we're seeing on screen, on the camera. And we were just so awkward because we were put together and we're like really good friends. And now we have to be like these lovers. And it was just in the beginning, it was quite awkward to like to kind of like, you know, get it out of our heads and just understand that it's it's working you know until finally we were like okay we're just gonna trust the director we're good let's just let's just go with it let's flow with it but honestly it was like every time we were acting we felt like we were just like we're, there's nothing <laughs> happening is there is there did you feel anything is it happening like do you believe us I was like, like it was just yeah it's funny so uh of all the scenes in the film there, there's a couple of scenes that are memorable there's one with a knife where you stab a guy where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, <laughs> and But the other one, and the one that kind of I do, it just sticks in my mind, is it's yourself with a chainsaw. And, chainsaw, yay! And, and, Finally, and somebody noticed. A, a person of smaller, I don't know what the correct term is these days, a, a small person. Small person. A small um, person. How, yeah, how... Punch Miller is a friend of mine. He's a member of the actor Studio, so am I. So we've worked together on stage a lot. And right. this was the first time that I was like, I'm going to, you know, I, I think we should, you know, work with him. And I, I brought um, Timothy, the director, to his stand-up show, and he loved him. He was like, oh, my God, he's genius. He's <laughs> like, he's our missing piece. And that's exactly what you're going to do. So the chainsaw was an addition from um, Jeffrey Reddick and, and Timothy Woodward Jr. And, and they were both like, this is going to be the best scene in the movie. This is it. This is our, like, trailer scene. This is why we're doing this. Is it so it was, it, was, it was a fun scene to shoot, except... Um, there was a little bit of a hiccup going on with the dress, like another thing with the dress. Yeah. Um, we were gonna shoot that last scene with a chainsaw, like completely final after like like it was it was gonna be the last scene um of the whole movie because I didn't get 
um, an extra dress. So we, you have to change the dresses throughout the whole movie because you can't just have one. It's depending on which scene. So we can cut it here, then we can add a little bit more blood here, a little bit more dirt. And one dress did not arrive, so we never had a clean dress. So I was keeping this one dress that I was wearing clean, and we're like, the chainsaw, the blood goes final. And, and by the end, it's, it's going to be our last scene. So nothing happens right now. I guess our makeup artist did not get the memo. So <laughs> while well, I'm here with a chainsaw, you know, acting it out, thinking, oh, I'm just, just going to... Uh, and, and, and that's it. And then the director's going to say, cut. Nothing's going to happen. So I go... And, and I'm thinking, oh, it's good. And all of a sudden, I feel this cold, disgusting, sticky, red, I don't even know, fake blood just splash all over my eyes, inside my mouth, everywhere. And I was like, <gasps> my reaction is like, seriously, like, it's it's priceless. Because I was like, I guess I'm just going to continue. And I just, all I was thinking, I was like, oh, my God, my dress. Oh, my God, my dress. What are we going to do? And we went through hell cleaning it. I mean, in the end, it, it's funny because the dress, the final dress never arrived. So the thing that happened is we had to basically paint the dress in white <laughs> glue. And it was like white paint for the for the first scene of the movie in church. Yeah. So it, the things you, you have to do, trust me, it's crazy. I'm basically sitting in church and I can barely move because I feel like I'm a mummy. I'm going to have to get off and stand <laughs> I'm going to watch it again and see just sort of how, uh, what sort of condition. All those things, like when I watch the movie now, I'm like, oh my God, remember this? Oh my God, oh, it worked out. Oh, it's like all these things that you just have to figure things out on the spot and you're like sweating because you're like, you know, you can't postpone the shoot. You have to do it. But how? Because honestly, bleach does not work for fake blood. It does not work. Like it does not come off. So. So you've got this, you've got an extensive uh, back catalogue of films to your name. Um, you do your own stunts. Um, you're also a classically trained ballet dancer. You're fluent in four languages. You're a producer. You own your own production companies. Um, Natalie, is there anything that you can't do? <laughs> I'm not a director. Ah, I'm not a director, right. not yet. <laughs> not yet. That's like my, my vision, you know further along in life but I definitely I'm 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 looking at Timothy Woodward Jr.'s like you know career and how he's directing and I'm just learning and learning right now so I would love to one day maybe pursue that um I think I'm um I think I understand directing from obviously you know actor's point of view and understand the approach of like how to take on a character and the arc and what's happening but um you know everything else I'm just kind of just still learning everything else the lens of the camera and all the other aspects of it i think producing helps helped me a lot to understand the logistics and how to make the movie and how to appreciate yep. each each crew's position and how important it is you know to make movies with you know this whole team effort that it's not just like you know one man show it's not an actor who makes the movie it's the whole team you know so i'm, I'm definitely more grateful and respectful of their um their jobs and how much time they put in to do stuff and and um, the, the final product is basically our, you know, full creation of our team. And and it helped, it kind of helps me understand how to approach now directing, but I'm not ready yet to take on um, such a task. Like I like to, I, I don't, I don't really understand people that just kind of wake up the next morning and go, I'm going to be a director. Like I'm, I, I don't, I don't get that. I like to do a lot of research and, and just like learn until I really, really know what I'm doing so that I can kind of back it up and say, no, I do know what I'm doing. I'm not just like, <laughs> I didn't just come up with this. So finally then, um, and we ask all sort of actors and directors this, uh, going right back to when you were very, very young, can you remember the very first film you saw on the big screen? I do. I had that question. I mean, like people asking me, which is funny. I should probably change like film. <laughs> right. And then I'd be lying. Um, well, there are like actually three movies that made me feel like um like this is what I want to do. And number one was Gone with the Wind. I was very young and I watched it and I fell in love with Vivian Lee as a, as an actor, as an actor. And I remember watching her and everybody around me was calling her a star. So I figured, oh, that's her profession. And I was like, well, I want to be a star. <laughs> and then later on, it was Armageddon. Don't know why. Alien. Alien. Because I love, I love horror. Like I love Alien and Aliens. And um, King Kong. King Kong uh, with... Um, um, with the Bridget, what um, 1933 version, the yes. first one. Yes. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, interesting. And 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 after and the second one, like those those are the two films that I was the, in. The yeah. nineteen seventy six version with Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, yes. Ah, right. Okay. I love Jeff Bridges, yes. So when I saw that, I was like, oh. It's so 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 romantic, so nice, yeah. And I just I don't know. And I have a soft spot for I guess monkeys. I, don't know. <laughs> right. yeah. I love animals. So whenever I'm watching a movie about like a a big animal, I'm like, and and something happens to it, I just I just cry in the end. So I cannot. I honestly cannot watch movies about animals to be honest without crying. Like I well, just there, yeah, I'm just I love I love animals more than anything. There's a talk of a, doing a reboot of Anaconda. Oh my god, I love that movie. Like, I want to be mad. <laughs> I'm honestly like, I'm obsessed with snakes. That's like, no, no joke. It's my favorite like animal, I guess, like or lizard. Um, snakes. I used to own two pythons just because I'm I'm totally fascinated by them. Like, I think they're just so amazing. So yeah, I would definitely be on an anaconda, which is like really weird, like thing to say, but I love I love it. Well, who knows? You or may... at least I'm definitely watching it. I'm definitely we, watching. It. We may well see it. you in it then. We may well see you in it. I know. You gotta be like, <laughs> you gotta put me in that icon. I'll be the snake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just, the, yeah. It's been absolutely delightful talking to you. Thank you ever so much. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. On the film, and um, kind of look forward to a possible sequel with this one. We'll have to as that. Yes potentially well let's see hopefully the audience in uk will love it and they'll request for it and we're gonna definitely make it hope so thanks natalie thank you